Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station is ready for the event. Space.com, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Miriam Kramer with Space.com. How do you hear me? Sorry, I can't I can't hear anything from Rick. Okay, I just heard somebody there. Oh great. Hi Rick. This is Miriam Kramer. Um thanks so much for chatting with us today. Oh you're welcome. Glad to be here. So some people have trouble just picking a Super Bowl watch party or dealing with time differences during the Olympics, but crew members on the space station have to contend with trying to keep up with sports from hundreds of miles above the Earth. So we're getting excited here in New York because the Super Bowl is in our neck of the woods this year. Are you looking forward to the big game on the station? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Of course, uh, we're not going to be able to watch it real time up here. But uh, hopefully uh, Houston will uplink a version of it uh, the next day or within a few days, and we'll get to watch it. So we just got to be careful nobody tells us the score before we do that. <laughs> Great. And are you rooting for somebody in, in the game, Seahawks or Broncos? Well, you know, I think uh, I think I'm leaning towards the Denver Broncos. I don't feel strongly about either team, but uh, it'd be great to see uh, to see uh, Peyton Manning uh, win another uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> great, yeah. And as a as a Tennessee native, I am also rooting for the Broncos. Um, so uh, we have heard that the space station has about the wingspan of a football field. So have you guys ever tried to play football on the station? And is there even a football on board? Oh, we have all manner of uh, sport sports equipment up here. I know uh, on my last mission, we actually played a little bit of baseball, you know, kind of in slow motion. You got to be careful up here. There's a lot of uh, scientific equipment and expensive things that you don't want to break. But uh, every once in a while, uh, yeah, we have uh, we have some fun up here. We don't have a lot of time for it, but we do have some fun up here time to time. Great. And also the Olympics are coming up uh, in February. Do you expect any friendly international competition between crew members during those games? Oh, yeah, I think so. You know, we've got the, the Japanese astronaut. we got uh, three Russian astronauts, and then you got Mike and I from the United States. And uh, I think there'll be some friendly competition, especially, uh, you know, uh, maybe if the uh, hockey teams, the uh, Russian and uh, U.S. hockey teams meet head-to-head, -head, that would be always interesting. Maybe we'll uh, place a bet uh, uh, with some food items or something. <laughs> what kind of food items can you can you bet on? Uh, do the Russians have something on their side that, that you guys might, might want versus... Oh, yeah, you know, the, the key up here is uh, is uh, getting something different every once in a while. When you're up here for such a long time, even though we do have a wide variety, variety of food, it starts to get a little bit old, so anytime you can get something a little different, it's, it's definitely a, a treat. So uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure the Russians have a lot of good food, and uh, there's a lot of things that we have that they, they enjoy also. Great. And, and which Olympic winter sport would, do you think would be the most fun to play in weightlessness? Oh, boy. It's hard to say about an Olympic sport in weightlessness, especially the uh, Winter Olympics. You know, we don't have uh, much snow up here other than outside when we're, uh, you know, doing a spacewalk like uh, we had uh, last month with the ammonia snowstorm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the kind of the thing we do up here is more like gymnastics. You know, when we're floating around and spinning around, you kind of feel like a gymnast or how a gymnast must feel when they're doing those incredible feats. Of course, uh, they have a lot more uh, uh, difficulty doing it in the 1G environment. That's great. That actually leads right into a question that we got from a reader. Drive Hyman on Facebook asks how orientation works on the space station. So how, how do you keep yourself from being disoriented in microgravity? Yeah, that's a good question because there is no up and down here in, in space. 
and it's easy to get disoriented, especially if you start working and you start kind of putting your head inside a, a locker or a, in behind a rack. Once you come out of that locker or rack, you're like, okay, where am I? And so real, usually what I do is I'll reorient myself to a, a kind of like a 1G orientation where the, uh, where the deck is the floor, and I put my feet on the deck, and then my brain kind of recognizes where I am. But a lot of times we float around sideways or upside down, and, uh, and it's, it's no issue. But every once in a while, it's, uh, I have to reestablish uh, my orientation by just kind of getting my feet on the deck. Um, and we also we have a question from Robert Perlman, the editor of CollectSpace.com, one of our partner sites. And he writes, the Olympic torch you and your crewmates had aboard the station uh, will be seen by millions more when it's used during the opening ceremonies at the Games. So what me message about the space station or the symbolic connection between space and – what message do you have about the space station and the symbolic connection between space exploration and the Olympics? Well, that's easy. I think the uh, the key phrase is international cooperation. Both the Olympics and the International Space Station are great examples of what can what uh, folks can do when they get together. All these different countries get together and kind of uh, try to accomplish something. The, the Olympics are an incredible event. All these different nations from around the world get together to participate in the uh, athletic events. And look at the uh, International Space Station again. You got many countries from all around the world building hardware and then we assembled it in orbit and it had to fit together perfectly. So international cooperation is the key to uh, being successful in anything. Great. And um, I know that you won't be able to watch the Super Bowl live, but do you think you'll get a chance to watch some of the, the Olympic Games live? Oh, yeah, I think so, uh, very much so. We'll have some uh, of the Olympic events uh, sent up to us, uh, tape, uh, tape delayed, basically. But uh, we'll also get some live events. I think on the weekends we often they will uplink a, uh, a TV station for us, and, of course, we'll ask for the Olympic events to be sent up to us. So I think on weekends is a very good possibility we'll get to see some of the events live. Great. And is there one that, that you're particularly looking forward to seeing? Well, you know, I, I like all the uh, a lot of the events in uh, the the Winter Olympics, uh, the speed skating and some of these uh, these uh, different uh, um, skiing events are pretty uh, pretty interesting to me. Anything where there's a lot of speed seems a little more interesting. <laughs> Uh, and actually, circling back to the Super Bowl, I know that uh, Mike Hopkins, your fellow NASA astronaut on the station, is is pretty into football. Um, so, are you two rooting for the same team this year? Is there any tension there? Uh, yeah, I, I just heard Mike yell out Broncos. So I guess we're <laughs> I guess we're rooting for the same team. Uh, Mike's a big college football fan. He watches, you know, he watches it and tracks college football. I'm more of a professional football fan, uh, and again, of course, I'm a New York Giants, big New York Giants fan, since I'm up from around that area. And it would have been great to see them in the Super Bowl this year, but uh, that didn't happen. But uh, sounds like we're going to be rooting for the same team in the Super Bowl. That's great. And do you have any Super Bowl traditions that you're going to miss this year that you would be doing back on Earth? Oh, my usual Super Bowl tradition is sitting in my chair watching the game in my uh, living room or study. So obviously that's going to be quite a bit different, uh, but we're going to have a great vantage point from up here, and I'm looking forward to, a, to watching a great game. That's great. Um, and we have uh, another question from a reader. Uh, Mohammed Shivan on Twitter asks what your favorite city is to look at from space. So uh, you take some great photos and post them on Twitter, but do you have a favorite, a favorite place to look at when you pass over? Well, you know, there's, uh, I don't know if I have a favorite city. The easiest one, obviously, is uh, New York City in the Northeast uh, because you got Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., you got uh, New York City, you have Boston, you have those, you have all these major cities all in one place. And then you look down, and it's like looking at a map, especially at night. You could see the, all the big cities all well lit up. So the Northeast of the United States is where I know, I know that area the best, of course, so it's easier, it's easiest to uh, recognize. But all the major cities around the world are very interesting to look at. And if you get the right vantage point, they're, uh, they're beautiful. And you can get some fantastic pictures of almost any of them. Thank you much for chatting with us today, Rick. Really appreciate it. Have a, have a great day on the station. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.